Hi, I'm Steve DeVal from Thor Motor Coach and welcome to this episode of Getting to Know Your RV. Today we're going to take a look at getting to know your Outlaw Class C toy hauler. We're going to start up front on the brand new Ford E450 chassis from Ford. This has an updated V8 engine in it. You have 350 horsepower, 468 pound-feet of torque. Uh, the hood release is inside as it would be in your car or your truck that you drive. Uh, under the hood here you have your prop rod. You can go ahead and prop this up right here. And now you have access if you need to change your air filter, you need to maintain your battery, add washer fluid, check your transmission fluid, check your oil, add your oil here. You have your overflow uh, and you have your brake fluid, your steering, everything you need is right here. So you can go ahead and you need to do maintenance and just like anything else, you need to do your proper maintenance on this. But uh, real easy, just like, uh, just like your car or truck at home. Close the hood just like that. You have your headlights, you have a front license plate if your state requires it. Moving around to the side here, we do have your antenna for the radio. We have our nice cap up top, one piece uh, front cap. We have our mirrors that do push in. So if you're into a tight spot, you can go ahead and push your mirrors in. Because this is a Class C motor home, a lot of people love the accessibility of having a door. You enter just like you would your, your truck, you have your running boards, your seats. We'll take you through the inside here in just a few minutes, but nice climb up there. This is the arm for your power awning with LED lights. We'll show you how that works. Nice frameless windows you can open from the inside to get a nice breeze. So the nice thing is, is they angle out. So even if it's raining, you're not going to get wet. Uh, down below, we're going to open our first storage bay here. And you do need your key to unlock them. And I'll pull out my keys. It is going to be this little gray key on your ring. This locks and unlocks your storage bays. Uh, just a word of advice after you take and you unload what you need or you're loaded up to hit the road, go ahead and lock those because the last thing you want to have happen is to have your storage bays opening when you're driving down the road, to do damage to your vehicle, you don't want to lose your belongings, you don't want to do damage to any anything else. Uh, what's nice about these is because they do flip up, you do have a little latch here. Uh, you just pull it out, pop it into place, and then you don't have to worry about holding that up. But these are nice durable Rotocast storage bays, each of them have their own light. Uh, you can go ahead and load this up with whatever you need inside here. This is a great one, especially for an outlaw. Say you're tailgating. This is, this is really kind of one of the ultimate tailgate machines. Go ahead. It, a lot of people will throw a couple bags of ice in here. And then they'll throw their drinks in there. And it's really easy to rinse out and hose out when you're done. You have a nice little cooler there if you need a little extra room for a giant party with the tailgate. You go ahead. You unlock that. You do have turn locks on there. And then again, you just have your lock. And when you're done, put your key in there and lock it up. Moving around, we do have our entry door here. We have two locks on the entry door. We do have the door that locks the handle, which is the bottom. And then we do have the deadbolt up on top. So depending on uh, what, you know, if you're going to be gone for the day, go ahead and lock both of them uh, for the evening. You can lock them both inside. But they are operating on uh, two different keys here. Um, so again, the bottom does your locks your handle. The top is the deadbolt for your motorhome. Inside, a couple of things to talk about, and we'll show you the control panel here when we walk in. You're going to have a rotary dial switch for your battery disconnect. This is one of the first things you really want to do before you set out for any type of a trip. Turn it from the 12 o'clock position to the 3 o'clock position. This will turn on the power systems in your motorhome. You'll be able to turn on your lights. Um, and it's important to keep this on the entire time that you are using it because either you're running the generator or you're plugged into shore power, this is going to help maintain your batteries. It is going to charge your batteries. It is also going to allow your chassis battery to charge your house batteries while you're driving down the road. So the only time you're going to want to turn this in the off position is when you are storing your motorhome for a long period of time. And even then, if you are going to just, you know, winterize it, and we have a video on winterizing, what you're going to do is disconnect your batteries, actually physically go in and disconnect your uh, house batteries, which are located right down here. And we'll go ahead and open that in a little bit as we head in and kind of show you all those systems. But you're going to want to disconnect your house batteries, or if you have an adapter and some place to plug in, you can take and run from your 30 amp shore power cord on this down to 110 and plug it in and keep those batteries maintained. There's a few other switches that we'll show you as we head inside, but your house battery, always keep it on, leave it there. Right here, this is your fresh water tank fill. 
This is where you're going to fill up your fresh water tank. What you do is you simply take a hose, put her in there, you have a little vent here, and when you are full, you'll start to see a little water trickle out of there. You go ahead and you fill this up. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the tank of water, depending on how much you want to fill, is that also ties into your occupant and cargo carrying capacity. We have a little yellow sticker on the door. We'll show you when we talk about weights and towing. But a full tank of water is also going to factor into your towing weight and your OCCC. Moving over here, we have a couple of 110 volt outlets here. So what you can do here, you're outside, you can set up the table, which is really cool. We'll, we'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Hooks right onto here, so you can use it as a towel rack when you come back from the beach. You can use it as a table. You can set up your blender here, whip up some margaritas. You can whip up some smoothies. Maybe set a, 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 whatever you want up there, plug it in. You're good to go. Opening our bay down below. What we have in here are the the mechanics, the hydraulic system for our one-touch leveling jacks. This coach is equipped with one-touch leveling jacks. So in the event that they will not retract, you can come down here and we have a complete video on how to do this, but you're just gonna crack open uh, the valves in the back and then you're gonna take a cordless screwdriver, a drill, and then you'll use the correct bit and you'll run them up or down. You also have your low point drains when you're ready to drain your tanks. Uh, to winterize, you turn the knobs and you can see that you can drain your tanks that way as well. So that is what is down here. Close it and you're going to lock it. All right, let's talk about some exterior entertainment. You do have an exterior TV. It is on a swivel. So you can swivel it like today. We have the sun right over here. If you're sitting here, you can go ahead and swivel it this way. Keep the glare off of the TV. Really nice feature to have. It's also tied into this Bluetooth sound bar. All right, so you can pair this with your phone or your tablet and stream music. Uh, you can play the radio, a lot of great features here. It connects just like any other Bluetooth device that you have. But let's say that it is really, really sunny out. Oh, have we got the feature for you. We have an awning. It is a nice power awning. You can go ahead and really give yourself a lot of shelter, a lot of shade. You hold down the button and it will come out. The arms on the side are where you control your pitch. You just move the arms up or down and you'll be able to pitch the awning left or right. Maybe it's a, a lot of rain on top. Just pitch it down a little bit. It'll roll right off of there. It'll come all the way out. And there you go. So you have a lot of nice, great shade out here. You also have an awning light that you can turn on. So that acts as a nice night light. Uh, that is the middle switch in here. You can turn that on or off at night. Uh, it's recommended you put your awning in at night when you are coming in to sleep for the night or if you're gonna go away for a long period of time, you're gonna take, a, take the toys out of the garage and hit the trails. Go ahead and put your awning in just in case the weather kicks up. You don't wanna do any damage to your motor home. You don't wanna do any damage to your awning or anybody else or anybody else's motor home. Um, so the night light, the on, you can keep the LED lights on at night that really kind of illuminate your setup. So when you turn, come back late at night, you can have a nice night light to, uh, to see outside. To put the awning in, you simply hold the in button and away it goes. And you will put your awning in like this. As this awning comes in, you'll notice right up by the rail, you have a black rectangle. That is going to be a vent for your garage. So when you have toys in the garage, you have your dirt bike running, that's going to help you exhaust the fumes out of there. So this is a great setup for camping, your power awning, your TV, really a lot of entertainment features out here. Set up a couple of camping chairs, which fit perfectly in the next storage bay that we're going to show you. You set them up, you sit out, and you have a great, great time in your outlaw. It goes in just like that, and now you're facing the bright, bright sun. Go ahead and lock this up. As we work our way down, we do have the exhaust for our furnace, so be aware of that, that on this side, it is going to be hot, so this is where your furnace exhausts. So just make sure that if your furnace is on and it's cold that you're not touching, because that is gonna be hot. Ah, here is the storage bay we were talking about for your camping chairs. Right here, they fit in perfectly. You have a light to help you see, load things in or out at night, so a nice rotocast storage bay, durable, easy to clean. And finally on this side, we have our exterior propane connection. The turn on is on the other side. We'll show you what that's all about. But this is, has an on and off valve. So after you hook up your exterior grill or maybe you hook up a portable gas fire pit, whatever it may be, 
be aware that this is regulated. So if you have a regulator on your grill or your fire pit, it's not getting the uh, amount of uh, juice that you need there, the amount of propane, go ahead and take the regulator off your appliance and you should be good. Now we're gonna walk around to the back. We're gonna talk a little bit about towing and then we're gonna show you how to open the patio. Your Outlaw is equipped with a class four hitch, two inch receiver here. You have a seven pin connector. You have a four pin connector. You are able to add a trailer brake controller if you want one does not come in this outlaw and there are a lot of things you need to know about towing you even have warning labels here about uh, gcwr and gawr and gvwr so what does all of this mean well let's talk about gvw that's your gross vehicle weight this is going to be the curb weight of the vehicle plus all of your cargo if you have a full tank of water your propane your passengers luggage that's everything now if you're towing that's your gcwr your gross combined weight rating so that is the trailer, the people, the passenger, the luggage, the food, the pantry, everything you need, okay, including your tow vehicle. And we do have information on ThorMotorCoach.com on the specs page of the website so you can find the GCWR of your vehicle. We want to talk about the occupant and cargo carrying capacity. That is going to be a little yellow label you're going to find on the door. We'll show you that. It's printed on the weight label. It lets you know how much weight you can actually add to your motorhome. And again, you do have to take into account if you have a full tank of water. We also need to talk about your gross vehicle weight weight rating. That is the GVWR. And this is the maximum allowable weight of a fully loaded outlaw. The other thing you have to take into consideration that this is an 8,000 pound hitch doesn't necessarily mean that you can tow 8,000 pounds. It just means it is rated to tow 8,000 pounds, okay? You also have a 500 pound tongue weight. You need to keep that in mind because that is the amount of a trailer's weight that is gonna press down on your trailer hitch. So you have to keep that all in mind. So how do you get your tow capacity? What you wanna do, you take the GCWR, subtract it from the GVW, your gross vehicle weight, and that's how you figure out your towing capacity. I know it's a lot to take in and we have a very detailed version on towing weights and capacity on our YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that out and you'll be all set. Everything you need to know about towing, flat towing, cargo, all the numbers broken down for you, but this is kind of a quick rundown on how it all works. So what we're gonna do now is show you how to open up the door, put out the awning, and use your patio on your Outlaw, because that's what this is about. So this is what the Outlaw is all about. It is a toy hauler, and you have access to a great garage. So here's how you access it. First, you wanna take and flip open the levers, and there are holes in here, so if you wanna put padlocks on there, and keep everything locked up. You just move, remove your locks, lift this up, lift up the handle, slide it out of the way. Same thing on this side. Lift it up, lift your handle, move it over, slide it out of the way. Grab your handles and down she comes. Okay, so a few things happening here. We got the garage, we have the loading ramp, we have the patio, we have a loading ramp. So let's talk about loading your toys into here. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take these straps off and you're going to flip up the screens. Now, if you want to take these screens off, you can. There are little pins. You pull those out. There are four of them, two on each side. You can lift these completely out of the way. To lower your ramp, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take these carabiners, just a quick little carabiner, load that down. Same thing on this side. Undo that and gently set your ramp down. Now one trick you can do to help take the kink out and lower the angle is if you take your front jacks, put them in manual, and we'll go over jack operation in a few minutes here, hold them down, get your front uh, jacks up a little bit, and this will take some of that kink out and give you a less of a steep angle. But this is simply how you put your ramp down, you load up your toys, you'll see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you have eight tie downs in there, so dirt bike on each side, you go ahead and you strap them down there, whatever you want to put inside you uh, can. So to put this back to get it into patio position, you just do the opposite. You grab your cable, it's got the carabiner on it, hook that side up, come around here, grab your cable, lift up a little bit, there you go. Now this also comes out, when we come back here and show you the garage, uh, you can pull this out and make a nice little screened in porch. Uh, we'll show you how to put out the patio, but that is exactly how you use this. There's a table inside. We'll take it back outside. So uh, uh, still a lot to talk about in here, but we want to work our way around the other side and show you what's over here on your driver's side. Whole lot of stuff to talk about over here, starting with 
This black rectangle, like on the other side, it is a vent for your garage to keep out any noxious fumes. We have up top, we have the vent for your air conditioning unit. There is a uh, air conditioning unit that is strictly for the garage, which is a really nice feature. We have another nice storage bay over here. A couple of things in here. We have your transfer relay. And moving on over here, we have our dual motor synchronous velocity slide controller. What is that? That is essentially the brains for your slide room. In the event your slide room malfunctions, it won't go out, it gets out of sync. This is where you're gonna reset that. There is a flashing light inside and there are codes here and it will tell you what is going on with it. To reset it, you press it six times, you're gonna need a, a small screwdriver or a pen, something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, hold it on the seventh and then the lights will go through a series of flashing and when it's green, you can go ahead and reset your slides in the event they do not still go in. You can also unplug the motors down below and then you can manually put the slides in. It's gonna take a couple of people as these aren't full wall slides, but still uh, you will be able to push your slides in and then you put, the, uh, you put the plugs right back in and lock them all up. We have your fuel fill right here and be aware on your gas tank, just because on the gauge it will give you the arrow of what side it's on, that's not necessarily the side. Over here it is on your driver's side. We have our city water connection when you pull into camp. This is where you're gonna take your potable water hose, typically white with a blue stripe. You can order them everywhere. You can get them at your favorite general store. Hook it up here, hook it into your faucet at the campground. Now you have running water. Now when you are hooked up to your city water, you do not need to turn on your water pump inside the motorhome. And we'll show you where to do that on the control panel. A lot of people at campgrounds will like to buy those filters that go between your hose and the campground spigot, just, uh, just a little extra filtration there. You can go ahead and add one of those, whatever you like. Moving down to this little bin, this is where you can store your sewage hose. We'll show you how to drain your tanks. You pull your sewage hose out of here, you'll drag it up there, and we will be draining some tanks here in just a few minutes. Do you wanna talk about tires? Cause tires are very, very important. We talked a little bit about towing and tires have a key role in towing as they do need to be properly inflated. You'll get a better ride, you'll get better fuel mileage. We do have a valve stem extender so you can read the air pressure on the inside. Now these are going to be a lot, lot higher than your tires on your car. The tire pressures are gonna be located inside on a label here, but make sure that you have your tires properly inflated. It is something that you are gonna to wanna to check before you head out on every single trip. And it's best if you do it in the morning before you've been driving. You don't wanna check them after you've been driving when you're hot do it when they're cool. So make sure you take care of your tires. How about a little electricity? We do need that when we are plugged in. And everybody gets their own variation of how they like to set up camp and you're more than welcome to find out what's best for you. What I like to do personally, so say I just rolled my outlaw into camp. What I am gonna do first, because I want it to stay nice and cool, I want to uh, get everything powered up. I want everything to be ready to go. Hook up to power. So this is a 30 amp shore power cord. You'll know you have power. There's a little light here that will turn blue when you are on. So you take your cord and you go ahead and you plug it in to your shore power receptacle. You tighten the twist lock on it. And this is a great thing. So if kids are running around or whatever, it doesn't pull it out. So you have that in place and locked up. So now that you're plugged in, you're gonna take the other end and you're gonna go over to the receptacle at the campground or wherever you are going to plug in. The first thing you want to do is make sure that all those breakers are off. Turn them in the off position. A lot of times they get left on. That is the wrong way to do it. Breakers are off. You plug in your power cord and then phew, turn them on. Then you have power. So let's say you have 30 amp power and the only thing the campground has available for you is a 50 amp site. That's not a problem. You can get an adapter to plug your 30 amp shore power cord in to a 50 amp receptacle. That's not going to give you 50 amps of power. It is going to take and convert it down to 30. So you're not going to blow your entire system out. It is going to be safe. You're just going to have 30 amps of power as that's what this is wired for. And while you're over there at the receptacle, maybe there's a cable plug. Right here is where you screw in your coax. You run that out right over to the receptacle at the campground. Now you have cable TV. We will show you how to scan your TV in the inside and how to switch between cable and how to switch in between your TV antenna. We want to take a look now at our exterior shower. 
there you go, you have an exterior shower here. And this is going to come in handy for a, a couple of things as we get ready to drain the tank. But uh, hot, cold, just like that. Turn on your water pump though inside to make sure that you are using that unless you're again hooked up to the city water. I'm going to leave this right here because we're going to be using this in just a couple minutes here. I do want to talk about our tankless hot water. You have tankless hot water in your Outlaw. There's some information in here, um, a couple of instructions, but in the event this isn't working for you, you have an on off switch right out here. Remember, I is the universal power symbol, so make sure that's I. You also have a fuse here, so you can always check to make sure your fuse is not blown there. But uh, tankless hot water, really nice to have. I'll show you inside how to adjust the temperature, but when you're done, you just simply close that back up. All right, moving down a bay. And let me grab my keys. Right down here is your black tank, okay? And you can see that it keeps rolling over here. So this is really a pretty easy job that you have to do whenever you are out camping and you're going to use your bathroom. All right, so you have a gray tank and you have a black tank. The black tank is your sewage. That's everything from the toilet. Your gray tank is all the other water coming from your sinks and your shower. So in order to hook up your sewer hose, what you do is you pull it out of the bin that we showed you right there. You unscrew your cap. You take your three inch hose and it, it, it's just like this. It twists on, okay, you're all connected. You run it over to the campsite where the drainage is there. Now you're ready to drain your tanks. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pull your black tank. So you pull your black tank, you let, your, you let the sewage all flow out. When that's done, you go ahead and you pull your gray tank. Now all the other water will come through and that'll help rinse out uh, the hose, anything that's been left behind. When you're done, you close your black tank, you close your gray tank, and then you go ahead and you button up and you're good to go. However, you still have this hose, right? I wouldn't just take the hose off and lay it down. You're gonna wanna rinse that out. So after you disconnect it, hold it up like this. Remember I was talking about another job for the shower? Now you can turn on your shower and you can rinse out your hose. Keep it in this position though, all right? So you're rinsing out your hose, you can turn your shower off, and then you lift the hose up, gently make sure that everything in the bend comes down, flows down, you rinsed it out. You can even give it another rinse, and then that's when you're gonna wanna take and uh, fold it up, and you're gonna put it into, I like to use like one of those clear plastic storage bins to, to keep it in, and also make sure that you're wearing gloves. This isn't something you wanna do with your bare hands. Make sure that you are wearing some sort of, you know, dishwashing gloves, some sort of rubber gloves, protective gloves. That's what you're gonna wanna do as you drain your tanks. Uh, let's move on and take a look at our generator. So let's talk about your generator. You're gonna find it in this bay right here. It is a quiet gas 4,000 watt generator and it is really a great tool to have on board. Now you can take, you are gonna to have to service this. Okay, so you do have a, a circuit breaker in here in the event that your generator is not starting. Come down, check your circuit breaker. You can start it from here, but you can also start it inside. We'll show you how to do it, really easy to do. You do have to prime the unit first. Wanna check your oil, add it here. There are maintenance reminders with this that you'll have to keep note of and you'll find that in the manual that comes in your black bag with a number of other manuals. You're going to want to read all of those and get, uh, get familiar with the product, replace your air filter there. So one of the great things about having a generator is you can go anywhere that you want to go. So let's say you're off grid, this is an outlaw, so you're out in the middle of the salt flats, right, or you're in the dunes or you're out four-wheeling wherever. You can keep your generator running, that way the motorhome is cool inside. You can keep your air conditioner on. Um, use it. It's a, say you're going, and I, this is what I do, okay? So if I'm to out in the motorhome and I'm going to visit a little town, I'll park it off to the side of the road. Instead of shutting the generator off and then coming back to a hot coach to make lunch, keep your generator on. Keep your coach comfortable. You can come back after you explore and then you can make some lunch and you can go back out and explore some more. But do take note that there are certain parks, uh, I'll throw out Sleeping Bear Dunes, for example, up on the coast of Michigan, that if you are coming in to take a look around the park and climb the dunes and ride the bike trails, whatever it may be, that you are not allowed to run the generator when you are in the lot. So you might want to do a little research ahead, but that is a, a, a great tool to have, so go ahead and use it. Uh, up over here, I don't want to forget about uh, service to your refrigerator. You'll find, if you need to service your refrigerator, right back here, these are just little, little knobs you can open with a, a little key, you can open with a coin. These doors pop right off, and then you can uh, service your refrigerator. 
just like that. So everything that you need to do, your compressor, everything's in there. So if you would need to do that, you do have uh, easy access to that. When you're done, you simply pop that back into place. So finally up front, we have our propane tank and this is going to run your furnaces. It is going to run your water heater. It is going to take care of your exterior propane connection. First time you're gonna get it filled, it's gonna to have to be purged. There's a lot of air in it, so it's gonna take a little while longer to get the air out and get the propane in. But wherever you take it, they will fill it up right there. And you can take it to your U-Haul, your hardware store that does it, wherever. This is a bleeder valve. You have a gauge here to tell you where you're at. This is your on and off valve. Uh, there are a couple restrictions though with your propane tank when it comes to bridges and tunnels. So make sure that you're checking your trip route. If you're going through bridges and tunnels, a lot of times you do have to have that off. So make sure that you are following all the rules of the road. We're gonna go ahead, open the uh, driver's side door, sit inside, we'll show you how to set up camp and how to work your dash. So let's talk about the dash, because this is where all the sweet driving action happens. You go ahead and start up your outlaw. You're going to buckle in, strap down, nice seats, nice armrest here. You have cup holders, you can put sunglasses, a place for your phone, change, whatever you need. You have plenty of storage up here. We're going to start over here on this side. You have heated remote mirrors on this particular unit. And you can go ahead and turn on the heat there of that switch and you adjust the mirrors just like you do in the car. And that bottom mirror you're gonna roll down the window. On this side, adjust it uh, to seat on the side and on that one, maybe have, a, maybe have a buddy or a partner or a friend, whoever, go ahead and adjust that for you. Uh, you have auto headlights, which is a nice new feature this year. And you just simply turn the dial to A, now your auto headlights are on. So when nighttime rolls around, your headlights kick on. It is a great feature to have, you can dim uh, your dash lights from up here as well. You have power locks, you have power windows. This is just like a, a truck setup. It is an, it's an E-Series Ford again. You have an emergency start button, which is really nice to have. So let's say that you somehow, your, your chassis battery is dead. What you can do is you can hold this button down, turn the key, and it will take and draw power from your house batteries to start your outlaw, which is a really neat feature. So uh, that is great to have. You have a tow haul mode. We talked a lot about towing and hauling. This is where you can go ahead and sh uh, set your transmission for tow haul. Uh, we do have a number of controls on the steering wheel this year. This is an updated dash. Ford did a great job with this uh, for sure. Uh, as you scroll through the menus, you have uh, a couple of tripometers. You have trip one, you have trip two. You can check your fuel economy, how many miles to empty, uh, driver's assist. Um, you can choose a, a, how many engines are on your hour. If brand new motor home, five hours on this engine. Uh, you have a voltmeter. You have a maintenance monitor to let you know how much oil life is left. Uh, so a lot of great tools on this to help you on your trip. Of course, you have your tachometer, you have your speedometer. And then we move over here to your infotainment center and a number of controls. So we'll start with your controls, just like in your car. Uh, you do have uh, air conditioning, you can turn your vents, you have heat. I could use a little AC right now. Um, so I'm gonna turn that on normal and I'm gonna turn that on low. And now I got a nice little breeze, pretty quiet, didn't it? You have your hazard lights right here. You have traction control. You have 12 volt right there for charging up uh, whatever it need, whatever needs to be. Uh, you also have a USB-C and a USB-A port right here, so you can plug that in. Uh, what's also nice about this infotainment center here is it has screen mirroring. Uh, I don't have the app on my phone, but simply you, you, you plug this in. Uh, this is brand new and you go ahead and it'll say, hey, no uh, app installed. So you just go to that or you scan that code and then suddenly you can download the app and you can screen your mirror. But there are also a number of great features on this. Uh, back to the home button here, you have your radio. All right, so you can tune in local stations on your trip. Can't find anything you like. Satellite radio, Sirius XM satellite radio. Go through, there are some great channels on there. I, I prefer Turbo, Liquid Metal, Alt Nation, and Sirius XMU. Right there is my top four. Top four, oh, in uh, comedy, one of the comedy channels for number five. So a lot of great listening on there. That's how you set up the USB screen mirror. Uh, you have Bluetooth phone, Bluetooth music, your rear camera. So you can turn your rear camera on and you can see behind you. So if you are towing or whatever it may be, you can turn that on during the trip, which is a, a really a nice feature to have to check behind you there. Uh, you also have settings. You can customize a number of settings here and uh, your zone one and zone two. So when you are pumping music, there are actually 
uh, some speakers in here underneath the sofa will show you that you can go ahead and turn on so your passengers can rock out to whatever your jams or whatever your top five on Sirius XM you are. So great infotainment center here. You have traction control uh, right down here. And one more thing I do want to mention while we are up here is you do have cruise control. So you can set your cruise control. You have a nice little uh, reading light, map light. You do have some sun visors. These little black tabs right here are little Velcro tabs for your privacy curtain. So at night when you're pulling the camp or in the daytime, uh, you don't want all that sun glaring through here, heating things up. You can go ahead and you just stick that up all the way around here and now you have blocked out the windows. So uh, it makes a great little privacy curtain. You have your passenger seat. We'll show you more on this little filler cushion when we turn the seats around. So let's talk about some of the button switches and dials you're going to find on your entry door. Starting at the top here, you have a 110 GFCI outlet. You have some switches for lights, your awning lights, some interior lights. This is a switch that we put the awning out with. This is for a step light right down here, which makes a very nice night light when you have uh, guests sleeping up here. This is the rotary battery disconnect switch that we told you about. Goes from off to on again, turn it to on, leave it on the entire trip. We have an inverter right down here, press the button to turn it on. So what does an inverter do? Well, that's pretty easy. The Outlaw is equipped with a 1000 watt inverter and you'll find the power button right here in the doorway. It's going to take 12 volt DC power from the batteries and change it over to AC power so now you can turn on the lights, you can turn on the TV. It's also going to power outlets so you can use them without being plugged into shore power or having to run your generator. Now this is going to use power from your house batteries so you need to make sure they do stay charged. This outlaw happens to be equipped with 100 watts of solar charging. This is your 10 amp solar controller and you can monitor the amperage and the volts coming in to help keep your house batteries charged, which you will find right under the step. There's a little latch here. You just undo the latch, you lift up and now you have access to your house batteries. But before we can show you around the inside, we need to take, put down the jacks and put out the slide wall. We're going to show you how to do that next. So here we are at the control panel. You have a lot of options here. First, we're gonna start with your one-touch leveling jacks because you do need to put these down before you put out your slide room. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your engine is on. You turn your engine on, you push in the parking brake, you come back here, you press the on button, you press auto, and your jacks will come down and help level your coach. When they are done, you'll get a little green light right here in the center telling you they are level. It's always best to go outside though and make sure all four tires are on the ground. It's very important that your tires are not lifted up in the air. You can also set them manually. You just hit manual and then you have a front, rear, left, and right. And it will bring your jacks down in pairs, either the front jacks, both rear jacks, or your left side or your right side. When you're all done and you're ready to pull out the camp, make sure your slides are in and then you hit retract and all your jacks will come up. Now there are certain campgrounds and locations where you are gonna to need to be jack, have jack pads. So in one of the storage bays, it wouldn't be a bad idea to carry blocks of wood or some sort of jack pads with you in case the campground you're staying at requires those. Or if you're staying somewhere where the surface is soft, you're gonna to wanna to put those under the jacks as well. Moving up top, this is where we go ahead and we put our slides out. Now we showed you the generator. We're gonna go ahead and we are gonna fire that up. So in order to fire that up, you hold the stop button down to prime it. The start light is going to turn red. You hold it down and the generator will fire right up. And you are gonna need, uh, it, it's always good practice to start your generator before you put your slides out, just to make sure that there's enough voltage running through uh, to, to power the slides out. But you can see the generator is running. You'll know that it kicks on when the microwave clock comes on, you know that it does it. And it does take a few minutes before to, to, to kick on there. While we're waiting for that, you do have a number of different gauges over here. Uh, we'll start over here since the generator is running. This will tell you how many hours are on your generator. So when you do maintenance, this is what you need to look at. Oh, I have, you know, this has, this is a tenth of an hour. It's brand new, but you know, you're rounding up the time. Use that to keep your maintenance. Over here, you have a way to monitor your tanks and your battery level. You press these buttons. This is your propane tank, and it'll give you empty, one-thirds, two-thirds, and full. Your battery is full, your fresh tank is empty, your black tank is empty, and your gray tank is empty. So this is how you're gonna check your tank level. So now that we got enough power rolling through, let's go ahead and take and extend our slide. So you have a slide extend and retract button. Go ahead, hold down the extend button. 
out goes your slide. You're going to want to hold this down the entire time. Do not take your finger off of it. You want it to completely cycle. There are two motors on this. All they are designed to do is go in and out. Okay, you do have to sync them up every once in a while because sometimes your finger will come off. Sometimes you'll forget something down below uh, and you'll have to stop. Um, so what you're going to want to do to resync your motors is six, six sounds and you, you'll, you'll need to know the sound that it makes. You can hear the motor syncing up so you go one, two, three, four, five, six and then they'll sync up. Hear that? That was the motor syncing up. So you're going to want to uh, make sure that one, two, three, four, five, six. And now your motors are synced up. And again, there's the brain underneath uh, you can use as well. Bringing them in, same exact thing. You have a couple of uh, heaters here. You have a black tank heater. You have a gray tank heater. A lot of people ask about a Four Seasons coach. Now these are designed to keep your tanks from freezing if you're gonna go in extreme climates. You're probably gonna to need to add some additional insulation, maybe an additional uh, tank heater. These aren't designed to be operated in sub-zero temperatures, but these will keep your tanks from freezing. Uh, this is where you turn on your water pump. You're gonna to wanna to turn your water pump on if you are dry camping to use the water from your fresh water tank. Uh, that way you'll get it to your sinks, you'll get it to your shower, you can flush the toilet. When you're hooked up to city water, you can go ahead and you can turn your water pump off. And finally up here, we are gonna talk about the air conditioning unit because it is hot in here and I think Tom would agree, we need some AC. So you can go ahead and turn on your AC here. You have a number of different uh, options here. It's really like the thermostat at your house. You can choose from heat or cool. You can turn your fan off or on. I've turned it to cool. You can turn on high or low. I'll turn it on low. Uh, just from a noise standpoint, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the generator now as well since we're plugged into shore power. Um, you have auto low and auto high, and this is where you adjust your thermostat. Uh, it is really important though to, to point out on your air conditioning unit. On a day like today, it's in the 70s. It's very, very comfortable. And we'll probably set the AC right around 69, 70 degrees just to keep it nice and cool in here. But let's say you're out, you know, dry camping and you're out uh, in Utah. You're out doing some sightseeing in the mountain ranges there. And it is, let's say it gets really hot. Let's say it's 90 degrees outside. You never want to set your thermostat more than 10 to 15 degrees below the outside ambient temperature because what you're going to end up doing is freezing your coils up, okay? So if it is 90 degrees outside, you're going to need to set your thermostat at 80 degrees. And then when it reaches 80 and starts to cycle through and maintains 80, you can slowly, slowly bring it down, but it's going to, it, it's going to be a process. Uh, a lot of times what I like to do uh, when I have passengers, I keep my generator on when I'm driving. Yes, you can do that to run the ACs, okay? The, the units on top are going to get that airflow, so they're going to stay a little bit cooler. The people inside are going to be comfortable for the drive because, let's face it, the cabin AC is not enough to cool the entire coach. So turn on your generator, run your AC units while you're driving. The best time to set your thermostat is in the morning when you wake up. Okay, so you know it's going to be 85 degrees, but you want your coach at uh, 70 degrees. Go ahead, set your thermostat to 70 because it hasn't quite reached 85 degrees yet. Keep it there, leave it there. Throughout the day, your coach will stay at a comfortable 70 degrees. So that is how you want to use your thermostat. Now that we have everything set up, leveled, ready to go, we're going to head up front. We're going to take a look at your seating and sleeping options. So the air is flowing from our AC. It's getting nice and cool in here. And what's nice about the AC setup is there are two vents on the side. You can open and the air will really pour out right in that area or you can close them and then it vents them. So the people up here in this overhead bunk will get some ventilation as well. We also have a fan up top here that has a cover, which is really nice. So it'll take some of that hot air out. And a great tip, uh, if you're gonna be out for the day on a bright sunny day, you can put the sun, uh, sunshade up front uh, attach it to block the sun. You can pull the blinds down and that way it keeps a lot of that uh, hot sunlight out. You can fit two people in this bunk. 800 pound capacity. So it is very robust. Uh, this cushion comes out of the way. You can move that in the back when you want to uh, sit down here. So let's say that we have this just out of the way. I'm just going to set it there and hope it doesn't fall. Uh, but we're talking about the seat cushion, so the seat swivel. I went ahead and swiveled those. There's a lever on the side. You just pull it and the seat swivel. So now this is part of your area. So now you have some guests, you have some company, uh, and everybody's having a good time talking. 
at the end of the evening, making up the bed really, really easy. So we have our cushion here. If you have little ones up here who get uh, a, a little afraid, this is kind of a nice little safety net here. Just easy net, some seat belts. You just strap them right up there. Now you have a safety net. Here is our ladder. You go ahead, you put your ladder in place, and you have your bunk set up for the night. There's also a TV up here for the bunk. So you take these knobs and you turn the knobs, loosen that up, and then this swivels out. Move the ladder, move the seat belts. Now you have a TV for the living area. We'll show you the how to use the antenna and switch between cable, but that is how you set up your TV. Also a nice privacy curtain as well. There are additional HDMI ports on here, so if you want to plug something into it, you're more than welcome to use it how you will. If you don't want to use it, you can keep it locked into position. Let's head over to this couch. Oh, before I do, I do want to mention uh, for the top bunk people, great little USB charging port. You grab your cable, you take your phone, your tablet, throw that in there and that's going to stay charged for you. All right, now we're going to talk about our couch. So you notice you have one, two, three, four holes, little mounts, not holes. I'm going to call them mounts. Underneath the table, we have Underneath the couch, we have tables. Underneath the table, we have mounts. So we're gonna pull our tables out. All right. And we are going to pull our table legs out. And what's really neat about this setup here, unscrew this, you go ahead and you set that in there, twist it, and you tighten those up. Do the same for this side, loosen it up. Put it in the, in, the, in the slots, you tighten it up, you put your tabletops on. Now you have tables, and you can see you have four locations. So you can put one here, one there, two here, two there, one here, one there. You make up the combinations. If you're sitting here, you're reading, you're doing some work, look at this. You got lights that you can use uh, with the push button. And the speakers are under here too. We talked about the radio and how you can route the speakers. Those are the speakers that it routes to. So if you are done with your couches and you want a place to sleep, you're gonna like this because you got two of them. We're gonna go ahead and use this couch since this one has the table set up. Jackknife sofa, up and down. There you go, a nice little bed for the night. Word uh, of advice though, a lot of times if uh, your kids are sleeping here and they're missing something the next morning or at the end of the trip, there's a good chance they uh, took it down to, uh, they took it to bed with them and it just uh, slipped under there. So lift that up and you will find more than likely headbands or little gadgets or bracelets or gizmos. Uh, so that's a great sleeping area. So how about we take, we spin around and go through the kitchen. So no good kitchen is complete without a fridge and a freezer. And you have a double door fridge and freezer right here in the outlaw remember the curtains we were talking about the privacy curtains here they are you don't have to keep them in the fridge but this is just where they happen to be right now to to strap up for your for your privacy shades but one thing to note on this refrigerator all right here's your temperature control you can turn it on with that button and then you have how cold you want it the more snowflakes the colder and then you have your mode do you want it to run off of propane do you want it to run off of electricity or do you want it to be on auto? Set it to auto. That is when the A will light up. That means it will run off propane, so you got to make sure your propane is on, or it will run off of electricity, be it your generator or when you are plugged into shore power. Now, the first time you use this fridge, if you have the opportunity to take and plug into just a household outlet using an adapter, do it. It's probably going to take about six or seven hours for this refrigerator to get completely cold. So if you can overnight plug in the refrigerator and make sure that it's cold, that way when you start loading up for your trip, you'll have a nice cold freezer and a nice cold fridge. Behind us, another TV. We're going to get into tuning in the TVs and the options there. But I do want to show you the rest of the kitchen because it's really a great setup and offers you a lot of space in the outlaw. So checking out the kitchen here, we have a nice flip up countertop extension, great for setting hot dishes, setting a cookbook, whatever you need. You have your stainless steel sink. You do have some covers on there. If you need maybe a little more room, maybe a cutting board, you can go ahead and use this. And then 
throw the, the, the scraps down in there. You have a couple of uh, light switches here. Turn on the lights. Uh, nice. Look at that. Some under cabinet lighting here. Makes for a nice, nice ambiance. Maybe a little night light. And this controls the fan right up above. Uh, so if you need to turn on the fan, it's a nice, just a nice exhaust fan for you. You also have a three burner gas cooktop with glass cover. You can fold that out of the way. You also have nice cool blue lights on this as well. Uh, this lights just like it would uh, a stove at home. You turn it to light and because there is no propane, it's not actually gonna light, uh, but you turn it to the flame and then you turn and you can see it sparks and then it will ignite. For your cooking duties, you're going to use your convection microwave. I know it looks like an oven down here, but you have a great amount of storage. All the remotes for your TVs right now are in here. You can store those where you want, but pots and pans, all that can fit right down here. Your convection microwave works just like your oven. You can use it as a regular microwave. Sure, it's got popcorn and all sorts of different recipes on there, but you can go ahead and convect. You hit the convect button, you set your temperature, it preheats like an oven, whatever you need, slide in there, be it cookies or roast or whatever it is. Now cooking time is gonna be a little bit different, so you're gonna to have to watch it as you go, but it works just like your regular oven. Mobile Meals is our cooking show, so if you'd like to learn some great recipes you can use using the tools in your motorhome, check out Mobile Meals. Uh, a great storage up here, you have storage right up above, you have storage in the countertop over here, you have a nice pantry or you can take the shelves out, use it for a closet. Same back here. Uh, another closet, you have uh, a nice number of drawers, cabinets, silverware can go in here. You can, whatever you want. There's a lot of room in here, so go ahead and load it up. I do want to show you the entertainment options though before we check out the bathroom and head into the garage. How about we talk a little entertainment? Right under this cabinet, we have all sorts of wires and things happening here. So let's start with, well, you have 110 outlets up there, which are great. So you have your TV from over the head bunk plug into here. You have power to your HDMI distribution box and a power plug in there. But if you want to plug in, say a streaming device or a gaming console, you can, and you can use those because this is equipped with the WineGuard Connect 2.0 4G hotspot and Wi-Fi extender. So what that means is you can set up your own safe, secure internet connection no matter where you happen to be. You just plug your SIM card in up top, you set yourself up with a data plan, you download the app, you get signed up, you register for an account, you connect to that signal and you are online. So if you have connected a streaming device into here, you can watch whatever, binge watch your favorite shows. And this is an HDMI splitter. So you can watch a show on this TV, you can watch something different on the TV in the back. So whatever you wanna do, you can. One thing I do wanna point out though, is right over here is our WineGuard antenna. All right, so in order to put your TVs in antenna mode, to pull in local channels, there's a button on the side, you wanna press that. It will show a green light. When the light is green, you can go ahead and program your TVs to local over the air stations, okay? If you want to plug into cable, what you wanna do is press the button, make sure the light is off. Now your TVs are equipped to program all the cable stations that the campground is providing. So again, TV, green. Cable, make sure the light is off, and that is how you work all the entertainment systems. So how about we head into the bathroom? Welcome to the Outlaw bathroom. Everything you need is here for a laboratory on the road. You have a nice counter space here. You have your sink, you have uh, switches for lights, switches for your fan. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off. Remember we showed you the tankless hot water. This is your control right here. The red switch turns it on. You can set your temperature. Uh, 124 is the hottest it goes and you can take it down. So you can set it and forget it. Nice tankless hot water, large medicine cabinets here. You also have uh, a towel hook over the door here. You have a shower with curved curved rod, your shower is on a cord like this. Uh, I can't reach it, I'm just gonna set that right back down there. Your shelves for soaps. Uh, make sure your water pump is on though. And I do wanna talk to you about your toilet, okay? So a couple of things that you do need to know about this. Rule number one, rule number one, do not use regular toilet paper. Make sure it is RV or marine toilet paper. It easily breaks down. The stuff you buy at the store, the stuff you use at home, that's gonna mess up your tank. I have tried to unclog one of these when uh, one of my daughters used regular toilet paper. It 
was, it was not a good experience. So make sure you're using RV or marine toilet paper, okay? When you are flushing, here's a couple of tips here. It's a foot flush model, okay? So what you're gonna, or, or a hand flush if you're sitting here. If you're like this, this is like your own squatty potty, right? So just push down just a little bit, like halfway down, and the bowl will start to fill up with some water. Let up, you got water in the bowl, do what you got to do. It's a bathroom, right? When you're done, go ahead and depress that all the way. The water will start to spin around and flush everything down into your black tank. And we showed you how to drain that. So you should be good to go. That's your bathroom, ladies and gentlemen. Right across from here in the hallway is the fuse box. And it is a tight squeeze for two men, a camera, and lights. So I'm going to hop over to the Outlaw A for a closer look and explain how it works. What we have here is your converter. This is essentially your central processing unit. You're going to find this in your bedroom typically, but in depending on your floor plan, it may be located somewhere differently. We want to make sure that it is accessible for you no matter where you are and if your slides are in or out. Simply put, this is your fuse box. It houses your circuit breakers, houses all your fuses. And this is where the converter takes power from your generator, it takes power from your shore power, runs it right through here. It's gonna send 110 volts to the appliances that need 110 volts, like your microwave and your TV. It's also gonna send 12 volts to the appliances like your lights that use 12 volts. It's also gonna charge our batteries. But let's say something isn't working. Maybe it's your lights, maybe it's your fridge, your microwave, your AC, whatever it may be. Come back here, check to make sure that the fuses are engaged, make sure a breaker isn't tripped. All you do is you just press to open. Opens just like this. And it is laid out kind of like in your home and your car. It's kind of a mix of both. You have your 12 volt blade style fuses here like you'd find in an automotive application. And you have your circuit breakers here like you would find in your home, right? And we have a chart here that's gonna tell us what each of our 12 volt loads is and what each of our 110 volt loads is. And it's all labeled here. You know, you can see you have your TV, your microwave, your front AC, see your main breakers, your rear AC, your converter, your cooktop, your washer, it is all here. All right, so one thing I want you to take note of is at least on this one, your GFCI uh, is over here, and this is something to keep an eye on. So let's say that one of your outlets isn't working and you're not quite sure. Well, first I would go find your GFCI outlets, usually in the kitchen, in the bathroom, and reset that. That should usually take care of the problem. If not, come back here and then go ahead and flip your GFCI outlet all right now the 12 volt fuses are located here and if you do need to replace them make sure they're securely installed first one thing that is really important to do is use the correct amp amperage don't use a higher or a lower amperage than what you see listed here so this is a look at your fuse box and your converter and it easily closes and is easily accessible so take note of that and you should have no problems welcome to the garage this is what makes the outlaw the outlaw. There's a lot happening. We're gonna start right over here. We showed you the outside vent. And what it looks like, this is inside. So you can go ahead and open that, push the handle, and now you have a nice vent to get out the exhaust gases. You have speakers back here for your Bluetooth coach radio system. This is app enabled. You download the app. You hook it up to your phone. You can stream your favorite playlist, whatever you want to do, uh, auxiliary input. So go ahead and uh, get yourself some music going. We have controls for your lights, for your rear light, your ceiling light, your spotlights out back, all kinds of switches here. You have a USB charging port and you also have a jump station. So let's say the motorcycle's not starting, dirt bike's not starting, whatever it may be, you can go ahead and uh, jump it from here. Nice toolbox right here. You can store whatever you need. You can peel this off when this is yours. This is a protective coating. But you can see nice shelves out here, nice stations, so you can do whatever you need. Uh, you know, some people will take and they'll use the garage for an office. They'll set it up as an office, or a lot of people who show animals will use it uh, as a kennel for their dogs. So a lot of uh, options out here. A lot of options. This has right here a 1,000 pound capacity out here. So keep that in mind as you load it. Over here, fire extinguisher. It's always good to have in a garage, be it in an outlaw or in your house. A TV, which again is connected up front to the HDMI. We just showed you how to work that. You have, and I magically turned it on. You have your dedicated AC unit. You have a nice shelf back here. You have a table over here. Remember we showed you those silver rods out front? Well, this is the same setup back here. This is a great little table. So you got a little workstation. You're doing whatever it is, some crafts. Maybe you're done with that and you want to move this outside. So you take and you lift this off. Okay, so you have this with you. You fold this up, push it down, 
you go ahead, you carry it outside, you hook it up, it's outside. Now you can use just this. You set it up like that. You can use towels, bathing suits, whatever to hang it up, or you put this table part on it. It's got some magnets on there to make sure it stays secure. Set it up as an exterior table for food, snacks, drinks, whatever. Right above me, the bed, let me show you how this works. So to lower your queen size bed, there's a switch right under where the AC is. You simply hold the down button. You have nice storage cabinets right up here. You can store blankets or tools, whatever you need in here. And down comes the bed. A little place over here for cup holders. You can, little shelf for whatever it may be, but the bed comes right down. And here you go, it's as simple as that. Real easy to use, all the way down. How low can you go? Look at that, easy to climb on. And here's what's, uh, what, what, what's great, if you wanna sleep out here, this is a great, great feature. So if you wanna sleep out here, right here we have magnetic curtains. All right, so you unstrap those, you pull those, let the breeze in. Now, no bugs are coming in. Look at that. Nice little setup, right? There's also an awning that we're going to go ahead and put out. When you put your bed up, you're going to need to grab this device right here. You put the bed up, and I will meet you outside on the patio. It's time to set up the patio for some outdoor living. You take your ratchet. Put it through the hook, and away we go. Cranks out fast, cranks out easy, and now it is time to attach the legs. So what you wanna do is right up here, there are two orange levers. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna flip those. That is gonna to release the tension. Push this in, pull these out. and they attach right here on the side. Let's go ahead and pull that out, give us some more slack. All right, you lift this up. Make sure that's out of the way. There you go, just like that. We're gonna go ahead and do the other side here. and you lock it in place. Bring it in is just you reverse the process. You undo the attachments, put the arms in, you fold them back in, and you go ahead and you crank in the awning. When you're ready to enjoy some time on your patio, there are three snaps you need to undo. You have one on this side, two on this side. Swing your gate into place, and look at that, you are set up for adventure. So when you bring your outlaw home, the last thing I wanna go over is the black bag. There is a lot of information in here, including manuals, warranty guides. You have a 12 year structural, six year lamination, and one year limited warranty. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to to read through this booklet, okay? You're gonna look at what do you need to do to maintain your warranty. A lot of great information in here. Go ahead and read that. You also have an owner's manual. Okay, go ahead and read that. It goes over a lot of information. A lot of what we covered, if you need a refresher, you can go ahead, thrum through here. Look, there's, uh, we just talked about your ramp door patio. That is covered in here as well. So when you get tired of my voice, go ahead and read the owner's manual. In here, you're also gonna find your extra key, okay? The key that you're gonna have in the ignition is gonna have two sets of all your storage bay keys on it. This is your extra ignition key. You have owner's manuals for your radio. You're gonna have manuals and warranty cards for every appliance in here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is fill all of those out and send those in. That way all your appliances are covered. Another great thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to thormotorcoach.com, click on the owner's resource tab. There you're gonna to wanna to sign up. You simply type in the VIN number of your vehicle. You are going to get specifics about your vehicle. Quick start guides, how to's, owner manuals. If you need schematics for the electrical system or the plumbing, you can get those right there. It's a great tool for you to use. Again, that is on thormotorcoach.com. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. A lot of information there covering a lot of how-to videos, some cooking videos, some basics as well. A lot of great tools for you. We hope you use them and we hope you enjoy your time and your outlaw Class C toy hauler from Thor Motor Coach.